Hey everyone, um, been a while since I've done a video, I know, and as I promised Mark, quite a while late, mind you, um, we're going to be dealing with some cult craft paint. Uh, Crush Pop Productions has uh, sponsored me to make a video using their awesome range of paint, so what I decided for this little video here was we are going to paint us a space lizard man um got a bunch of these over at the uh bits bin and a store that i used to go to quite a bit made about like 10 of these guys so i figured you know what better way to test out a paint range than on a weird reptilian creature so that's what we're gonna do um change the format a little bit how i'm gonna actually paint this we'll see if it works i'm not sure uh yeah so without further ado i'm gonna pause the video get the camera ready and uh, let's get to some painting be right back all right uh so i'm back here we're going to be using uh quite a few paints from this range um we're going to be using uh, elementalist we're going to be using rupture or rapture sorry i can read uh we're gonna be using imperion uh might need some thinner so we'll see uh we're gonna be using simone so i really like the the two blues look like they're gonna go great together uh some blasphemer we're gonna be using some negative We'll be using some earth. Um, I think I'm going to use this. Uh, God, I hope I pronounced this right. Um, Halcyon. Yeah, that's what we're going to go with. Halcyon. Uh, some Vanguard for some silver. And last but not least, some Unlight. Um, I was looking to see if there was anything I could do in here that would work for like a glowy effect, but I'm not seeing anything on this specific model that would work. So... Uh, unfortunately, that's just how it's going to be. Um, I am not 100% sure how this is going to work because the if you saw what I'm looking at right now, this is a very cramped workspace. So I'm going to do the best that I can for you guys. Um, <clears throat> and I might cut around a little bit just depending on how rough this gets. So we're going to play it by ear. Anyway, um, we're going to I'm going to use the two brushes that were provided to me. Um, now, if I recall correctly, you get these when you buy their, when you buy their paint set, which is an awesome range. I played with it a little bit so far. This is going to be the first time really diving into it, but, uh, you know, had a baby work picked up. And unfortunately, uh, about two months ago, my rabbit Daisy passed away. Uh, I had to put her down. She had kidney problems. Um, it was, it was pretty rough. It was hard on me. Uh, regardless though. You know, she's in a better place. She's not in pain anymore. So there's that. But on a lighter note, we're going to try and paint this bad boy. So, uh, you know what? I'm, a, I'm thinking actually, we, I might skip. I think I might skip the red because originally what I wanted to do is I wanted to use Rapture for his eyes. However, I'm thinking with the blue and purple that I'm going to be doing on his skin, I think in Tempest Orange might look better for the eyes, so I'm going to use my little shaker here, shake this bad boy up, and I think we're going to do Tempest for the eyes, because I think that'll look a lot nicer. I realize this is going to be a, there's a lot of not painting going on right now, so we're going to get this show on the road here. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll get there when we get there. Uh, so first things first, we're going to start with the... Scales. And I'm going to use the Elementalist for this one. Give it a quick shake. And I might have to break out the paint palette. We're not. I'm not sure yet. Um, we'll see. I'll paint down on my palette here. Now, if there's one thing that Duncan has taught us, it's two thin coats. So I'm going to attempt the two thin coat method. Now I've been contrast painting for. Uh, going on about two years now, so this is 
It's been a while since I used legit paints, so we'll, uh, I hope this goes well. And we're gonna need to water this down a bit, so put a little water in that. I know you can't see me with the paintbrush. There's a lot of not painting right now, but we're getting there. Don't worry, boys and girls. We'll get there. Paint time. All right. So let's start with the scales here, and I hope this is in, fo oh, yeah, it's in focus. All right. So let's just start painting this stuff on. Uh, I did a zenithal highlight on here. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is a zenithal highlight. Um, I'm hoping this turns out pretty well. Like I said, I haven't painted a lot with these paints. I've used it for like some minor work on a um, another project I was working on. Uh, used it for some. I used some of the. I think it was a viscerator, which is like a really deep red. I used that on a on some piping and it turned out really really nice so I'm hoping that this does too and I've seen some stuff painted with uh, with this paint and it is it comes out very very pretty so Let's see how this goes so how y'all doing today if uh, anybody wants to chime in and say hi uh, i realize that i am not live i am planning on doing a live session here soon i got a um i'll be doing some gaming just because i get kind of bored sometimes and do like to play video games when i have a chance again baby and work have kind of crushed most of the fun i have not saying my baby isn't fun just saying they take uh both of those take up a lot of time, surprisingly enough. Who would have thunk it? But yeah, I had a boy. He is um, currently nine months. And he is a big boy. Like He's in like the 68th and 69th percentile for like height and weight. I think he's in like the 72nd percentile for his head. He is a big boy, and he is an eater. Um, the the running joke right now is he is a human garbage disposal because that boy will eat anything. We were out on uh, took a summer vacation, went down to Chickateague, Virginia, and we went to this restaurant. And my wife decided that she wanted to get this uh, steam pot, which had like mussels clams crab legs shrimp like the whole nine yards it was like just chock full of stuff and she decided to give my son a little bit of crab to see how he did he's not allergic to it luckily enough uh but that boy ate so much crab that i am surprised he didn't explode or turn into a crab himself um it was quite quite the show like he was throwing a fit when we when we when he ate it all and we didn't have any more so it was uh it was pretty funny i enjoyed it it was uh it was cute but yeah that's um that's kind of it like i said just been working but most of y'all who watch this channel know that i just do this stuff for fun so it's uh you might go a couple months without a video here and there but every once in a while i'll get one out I will. Uh, I'll come up just a little more there. Okay. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to go in and continue doing the, the scales here just because this is really hard with this angle. Um, I realize it's a bad excuse, but I'm going to come back and uh, we will start working on the tummy. So be right back. All right. And we're back. We got the. Let me get in focus here. Got the scales done. Add a little extra there. And now, oh, did I miss a spot? Hold on, did I? Oh, no, no, that's intentional. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do the skin. And for that, we're gonna be using Simone, which is a very light blue. And I'm very excited to see how this one comes out. And I am going to actually kind of add some thinner to this. Just get it to flow a little smoother. Because like I said, I've been using contrast paints for a long time. So it's been quite a while since I've... Um... 
used regular paints per se. So I'm hoping with a little bit thinner, let's smooth it out a bit. Oh yeah, there we go. Load up that brush and get to work. Sure I'm in focus. Focus, please, and thank you. There we go. All right. So we'll start with the head, just because for me it's a little easier to kind of get in here and do that. So this is a very light, light blue, and I like that. Um, the other nice part about it, too, is any mistakes, like, you know, touching the eye or the fin, uh, it's going to cover up really, really well, like I just did. So, yeah, that's the, that's the fun part when you're painting. Uh, most of the time, look, you make a mistake, hit it with some white, go over it again, you're good to go. Just the trick is not to paint over the stuff you've already painted. Because then the colors could look a little different, it could be a pain in the ass to fix, so... So it's best to just kind of get in there and get what you need done the first time rather than later. Like I said before, we're going to go back, we're going to do two thin coats, and that should give us a nice smooth finish. Now, one of the drawbacks to using regular paints is sometimes you can get a chalky effect, and it's kind of hard to understand until you've actually kind of seen it in person. Um, but the best way to counteract that is the two thin coats method. Because uh, what it does is, it, it really what it is, it's the paint building up and makes, um, if it's not properly thin, you almost get like a, it's not really like a powder, but it's kind of, um, yeah, it's hard to explain. Uh, but either way, you'll know it when you see it. So it's best to just kind of like thin your coats, take your time. Uh, it's not like, it's not like contrast paints or speed paints you're not winning records here you're just trying you're just taking your time working slowly and you just kind of go for it you know so yeah we're getting to one of those areas i'm going to again pause the video and do this without you guys unfortunately i'll be back okay and we're back so i got most I think I got everything. Like, like I said, this is kind of this setup's really hard to paint with. Um, I got respect for people who can actually do this properly. There we go. Uh, so we got the skin done. It's a little chalky in places. I might go back before I do the uh, the final wash and touch up a few places. But sure enough, we're getting there. Uh, next, what we're gonna do because we only need purple for a little bit, we're gonna do the fin right now because that'll be hopefully very quick. Grab a little bit of the the blasphemer purple Let's put a wee dot down you don't need a whole lot get a little loaded up on our brush here oh it's still kind of watery uh well we'll see and let's do it Right, we need to zoom in. There we go. Yeah, so you can see right now it's a little watery, so we're gonna definitely go back in with a second coat and hopefully bring this up so it's not so dull. Um, I think this one I didn't shake enough. Might have to go back and give it another. Good old shaking. There we go. Get the back of the fin here. And as before, I'm gonna go off camera, let this let's thin a bit, pop a second coat on, and I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going back in with some Tempest to do the eyes. Don't need a whole lot of this, just a little bit. 
because his eyes aren't that big. There we go. Uh, yeah, okay, got to do these off camera, unfortunately. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so we got the eyes done. Had to go in and do a little bit of a touch-up on a few spots because I oopsed. If I can get this stupid camera to focus. Have it in focus? Can't tell. There we go. So, got the eyes done. And again, one of the nice parts about painting is uh, the shading. Uh, when we use, we'll probably end up using Agrax Earthshade to uh, kind of tie everything together. And that will hide a lot of my fuck-ups. So, we got that. Um, next, I say let's work on the armor panels. Before I go back and pull my hair out. Um, we're going to use Vanguard. We're going to get the armor plating on shoulders and that gauntlet he has there. And probably do some of the gun as well. Oh, that's not good. Uh, technical difficulties. I'll be right back. Okay, here we're back. Had a uh, little bit of a paint pot incident there. Um, squeezed the bottle a little too bit too much, and it uh, kind of exploded. So, whoops. Need to be a little more careful with that. Um, so the nice part is. This is just going to go all over his hand here, so this will be nice, quick, and dirty. And the best part is the shade is actually going to bring out a lot of the nice detail on this. Um, now, one of the things I don't like doing is edge highlighting. Um, it Does it look cool? Yeah, it looks amazing, uh, but I don't have time for that. So what I like to do is I slap on some... Slap on some ink, get it just ready for the tabletop. I'll sometimes go back, like with bladed weapons, I'll do a lighter silver around the, uh, like around like the edge of the blade to give it that sharp look, but that's honestly as far as I'll go. And even then, sometimes it doesn't come out quite how I like it, so I just kind of scrap it. Really just depends on how prominent the edge is. Okay. Let's keep going here. A couple more spots to hit. Yeah, it might be a little, I think I put that on a little too thick there. So we'll have to just spread around that love. Oof. Yeah, like I said, I got I got mad respect for people who paint on camera because this is not easy getting like a nice, easy, consistent setup so you don't look like a um, hack job amateur like me. Because this, I feel sorry that you guys are even watching this for whoever decides to sit down and watch this. Um, but I really like this paint so far. Like I said, I haven't done. I haven't used regular paints in quite some time and these are going on nice. They're vibrant colors. Um, aside from my lack of technique since I've been using contrast paints for God knows how many years now. Um, this is nice. This is really nice. Kind of reminds me of why I got into the hobby. Just the relaxing fucking painting on the like uh, Relaxing. <laughs> Bit of just you know pulling out a model slapping some paint on it so i've been doing this since i was maybe 12 i'm like in my i'm like 34 now so been been doing this for quite some time um yeah i'm gonna go off camera for this one just because it'll be easier i'll be back okay we're back um got all the silver parts done here now we're going to do the gun casing itself, which I'm going to do in gold, because I think that'll actually look pretty cool. Um, so we'll start with this 
part right here. There we go. And yeah, we're just going to give this a nice coat of gold over it. Now you might be thinking, wow, that is a garish looking gun. And you'd be correct in the, that assumption. This is a garish looking gun. But I kind of want that. What it look like since this guy's like the leader of these um of these space lizard dudes at least in kind of like the little squad that i have um i want him to look like he's uh, almost like they're space pirates and this guy spent most of his money on his big sh his big golden shoot bangs if this were Call of Duty, you could tell this guy spent was the one who pre-ordered the game. Because he got that gold skin. Or, I don't know, what was it? You had to, um... He, did, he prestiged. He had to get that gold-plated gun. Word of the wise, if you ever find yourself in a real firefight, a uh, gold-plated gun probably not going to be your best friend. Because uh, people are going to aim for you first. <laughs> Just because I want to try and use as many colors as I could. Figured, eh, let's see how the gold works. Because gold's one of those ones that's kind of tough to get right. It's a, um, it's something about yellow paints. And this is going on pretty well. Like, it's definitely going to need a second coat. Um, but so far, it's going on nice for the first time, for like a first coat. So I can't complain. It is doing what I want it to do, and that's paint the gun at least a base color of gold. Now, usually what I do is I cheat golds. Um, I will throw down some silver and then use a yellow contrast paint, and that gives you a perfect gold every time with little to no effort. Um... But sometimes you got to go back to basics, and I am definitely going back to basics because, man, am I trash at painting. All right, so we got, got a good chunk of it. Uh, I'm going to go off camera, finish this up. Back in a second. Okay, and we're back. Um, we're almost to the home stretch here. We're going to get in some browns right now. Let me just put a little on my palette. And this time, I'm trying not to get my palette in a place where I'm going to knock the miniature into it. Um, ended up having to repaint a bit of his tail because I oopsed and got him in some metal. Maybe thought he was a Terminator or something. Who knows? Anyway, I got some earth tone. Got some earth. It's there, the brown in this line, um, and that's going to go on the glove as well as. Um, what else in here? I know I saw something else in here that needed it. Uh, these straps here and like here on the gun. So we can start with those. Just be very gent, gent very, very careful in this area. Just cause one slip and it's back to metal paints. I would like not to have to redo metal paints. Is a book of school. This is, a, this is actually a really nice brown. I really like this brown. Yeah, oh, I also uh, knocked off his arm, so I had to do a mid-video repair, so that was kind of fun. Uh, I haven't had to do that in a hot minute. I'm telling you, man, there, I got, like, no luck today for some reason. I don't know what's going on. It's just been one of those weeks, I guess. Uh, it's the old saying, shit rolls uphill or something like that. Uh, that looks like that is good to go. Let's get the wraps on the top of the gun and under his arm now. 
And this part's a little bulky, so I don't think I need to go into pause mode for this. I'm already going to have to edit this video, unfortunately, because I got a call halfway through it and had to uh, kill the video. So ended up getting, well, I'm going to need to throw this into the video editor, do a little splicey, splicey work. So, yeah, you know, it's just how it goes, I guess. So I'm thinking... I got this big bottle of Game Wash by Vallejo sitting right next to me. And I've been quite interested in using it, but not as intended, because it's intended to just dip your model in it. Uh, but I'm not a fan of dipping, because you got to be like really, really aggressive with cleaning and getting it fixed up. So what I'm going to do is actually paint it on, because unfortunately, new Nuln Oil sucks. Which kind of gets me into a GW rant that I've got brewing in the works. Because I am a little salty with them right now. Um, first off, don't like 10th edition. Uh, I read through the rule book. It just seems like 9th edition, but slimmed down and not in a good way. Because that 9th edition has problems. When I say problems, I mean it's got some... Uh, a little long in the tooth, if you know what I'm saying. I uh, played a game with a buddy of mine. I'm pretty sure I told this story before, but... It was Admeg vs. Space Marine. Fuck. just did that. Oops. I'll have to go back and fix that. Uh, it was Admeg vs. Space Marine. My turn took about 10 minutes. His turn took about an hour. We only managed to do two turns in two hours. And then called it, because I was done. Um, I don't know what the hell Games Workshop is thinking. They claim that their game, they want their game to be simple yet tactical. Um, there is nothing fucking simple about Warhammer 40k in the modern era. Um, third edition is simple. Second edition, albeit a little complex, is a hell of a lot more simple than fucking ninth edition. And 10th edition seems to be running into some of the same problems as ninth edition was. Um, looks like it, the game flow might be a little smoother. Um, again, I haven't played it, so I can't... I've just read... Well, I wouldn't even say really fully read, but I thumbed through the rule book a little bit just to kind of see what they did. And I am... Not impressed. I'll probably try a game one of these days. Maybe go down to like the GW store and get a demo going. But I'm... Ugh. Does not look like it's for me, boys and girls. Does not look like it's for me. But then again, I'm some old asshole who likes sec third edition. So you want to talk simple. Third edition was fucking simple. Taught my kid when he was five how to play third edition. So, that should say something. 3rd edition was a great primer for getting into wargaming. Because, guess what? That's what I got into wargaming with, was 3rd edition. And maybe it's just because I'm nostalgic for it, but it was... It wasn't clun as clunky. It was fast-paced. I mean, each... You didn't need a lot of models to, f to have a decent-sized army. Like, I think... Um, Unless you're playing like orcs or something, most armies come in under 50 mo like under 100 models. But then again, back in the day, 100 models didn't cost you like $600. Like it would cost you like 100. Yeah. I'd say about that. I think uh, I think my original Space Marine army was about 100 bucks. And that was about 1500 points. But it's like, um, a case in point. Yeah, like, okay, I'll go with inflation. No. Inflation happens, sure. Uh, but tell me how a basilisk, a plastic model that has been at, that I think hasn't really changed its sculpt. And that's, this is assuming that thing still is sold. Um, but a model that hasn't really changed since the late 90s, early 2000s, went from $30 to $60 a pop. And do you know how uh, most Imperial Guards armies use Basilisks when they did use them? They would use, I think it was like 
three. So, I mean, do the math. It's a lot of money for for that. Then again, that was back when templates were a thing too. So maybe maybe basilisks aren't used as much anymore because I know when they got rid of plate or the the templates, that was kind of like oh well, I guess my big artillery guys aren't as good anymore. Um, cause I never, I didn't really like what they did with the artillery rules either. Then again, I am a jaded asshole, so that could be a lot of things. Um, I think that's all. Yeah, we can go over that a little bit more. It's still a little. Uh, I could go over a little more entirely. Um, but yeah, and as a Space Marine player, um, this is mainly where the main part of my rant is going to, uh, is going to be about is the, as they call them now, firstborns are no longer playable. Uh, they are discontinuing the models. They're making like legendary, they're going to make like legendary rules for some of them. But pretty much what that means is, hey, do you like Space Marine, the original Space Marine models? Well, get fucked. Go buy yourself some, some Primaris Marines because the new boys are better. That's fucking annoying. Anyway, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to do a little bit of touch-up work and then we'll, um, Go in and do the claws and finish this bad boy up. All right, we are at the home stretch. Let's, uh, we're gonna paint up the claws and the fingernails, then figure out what we're gonna do with the base and call this model done. Mainly because I need to go to bed, I'm tired. <laughs> I got a long week of work coming along, so come on, focus, guy. There. Is that focused? I can't tell. Okay, you know what? This is going to be great if this entire video... Alright, there we go. That's a focus. Alright. So we'll get the fingernails here. Uh, I'm going to do black just because I think it'll be a nice contrast between all the extra color we got going on in here. And we'll make this guy an edgy boy. Mainly because he, uh, you know, he decided to have a gold gun. He's probably a little bit of an edge lord. Okay. Now the nails. And I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for. Oh, there we go. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for the base. Um, I'm thinking probably like cracked earth or dirt. I don't know. I kind of gone with dirt with everything else. I might just kind of keep my original theme. Okay. Let's get this last little bit. And then I'm going to pause the camera, go in for a few more touch-ups, because I did fuck up some of the stuff with the black here, because, you know, I'm I'm an amazing painter. IR, IR best painter. Like, comment, subscribe, because IR the best painter. Oh, shit. Ooh, okay, we good. It's about to have a moment here. Come on, just a little more. Almost. Hmm. Okay. Oh, got a little bit of a rim here. We can actually. I should just move this around a bit so I can get in there. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's better. Okay. I do believe the basics are done on this guy. Aside from a few touch ups, which I'm going to go do right now, then we'll uh, slap on some ink, let them dry, and then I'll. Uh, 
We'll base him later. But I think I'm gonna post this now, and I'll post. A, I'll probably post a picture of what he what he turned out with after the base is done. Anyway, I'm gonna pause it, doing some touch up. I'll be right back. Okay, we're on the last step now. I got my Vallejo paint or my Vallejo game wash ready. And uh, I'm going to brush it on because, like I said, most of the time you're supposed to dip it. I am going to see how brushing works. So let's uh, see. We'll start with the back and work our way down. I don't usually use black on skin tone. However, I thought maybe this time let's uh, let's try it. Since he's an alien, it might actually come out kind of good. So... There we go. Look at this. Nice in there. It's gonna it's gonna dull down a lot of it, but that's fine. That's kind of I don't want him too vibrant, you know. Um, I want him to look a little organic, a little dirty, even. Um, yeah, it looks like this is better if you don't go too heavy with it. Good to know. So this is my first time using the game wash. I got this because the Nuln Oil is now a different formula and I don't like how it spreads. So I wanted to kind of see how this would work. And so far, I mean, I'm going to need to see it dry first, but it goes on kind of like the old Nuln Oil did, which is a big plus for me because I like a uh, darker, I like dark tones. Uh, I always like, like the grim dark look. So... Okay, let's get his arm and his tummy. Oh, that is doing numbers on that shoulder. Nice. I like that. Now that is how it, the old Nuln Oil looked. And that is oh, beautiful. Brings out all that detail underneath. I love it. God, this fucking arm is in the way. How do people do this? Oh, I don't know. You could probably spend a good chunk of money on, you know, proper thing set up and actually focus on their camera and not paint off in the negative space. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, sorry, we're getting into some funky areas. This might not be uh, the best. And the focus is all fucked up. I love it. Oh god, I love this. This is this is great. This is absolutely great. Alright. Now let's get that fin. So what a lot of people like to call, um, like these wa like wa ink washes, shade washes, all that stuff, they call it liquid talent. And in all fairness, it really fucking is, because sometimes you can have, like, you can make some amazing looking models with very little effort. And it's because of shit like this. It just does the trick, you know? a few spots there but that's fine get underneath that and i gotta be a little careful around the arm because like i said i had to re-glue it halfway through this video so i'm hoping it should be dry I use some accelerant so it should be close to if not fully dry and if it if the uh this stuff dries funky then i know i was wrong more on there than that there we go all right yeah look at how it just pools into there so the only reason why i'm using vallejo's wash and not the cult craft wash is unfortunately the alchemy route the alchemy range which is um which is c uh crush pops inks um, they were out. Same with their skin tones, which is why I went with a reptilian on this paint job. Um, I think at the time they were out, they're back in stock now. But when I was uh, when when Mark sent these out, they were not. So it's all good. Um, but I figured I thought it'd be kind of weird if I painted a model with um, someone else's flesh tone. 
Uh, ink's a little different because, you know, I was, I'm going to use an ink anyway. Uh, but if I didn't have to use any other, anybody else's paint entirely per se, um, I didn't want to. So I wanted to give this stuff a fair shot. And so far I am liking it. Um, I can see applications for it, uh, as far as like what I'm doing. Cause like I said, right now I'm doing mostly speed paints. Uh, just because I don't get enough time to paint, um, I'm probably going to be sleeping on the couch for jumping off and doing this because she already texted me like two times going, hey, what are you doing? You know, married life. But hey, whatever. I gotta have something, right? Besides, it's like I told my son. I married my wife for three reasons. She's short, she got dark skin, she got and she's super mean. All the things I love in a woman. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Nah, that's that's wrong. I love my wife. Uh but that is her in a nutshell. She is a short tan she's a short, dark skinned, angry woman. Uh but that is why I love her. Wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, good. That's Sure, that's not broken. Um, I don't see anything that's gonna pool too badly in here. I think I got all the spots I need to. Um, but yeah, I'm going to th think. I think I I'm gonna call it here. Um, I got everything that needs to be done done. So I could put a little more in his crotchal region there. Use a little bit that smack dab there. And just kind of work it down. It's not too dark there. Kind of want to get back in here. What the hell? It looks like I missed a painted a spot. Uh, okay, I'll go back and fix that. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, all in all. He should be good to go. I'll let him dry and I'll um, I'll finish basing him and I'll show you guys how he looks in uh, post. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, sorry it took me this long to get this video out, but yeah, I think for a little space lizard, he turned out pretty good. Uh, but we'll see when he dries because he might need a little more work afterwards. Anyway. Uh, take, uh, take care guys, have yourself a great day, night or whatever, and I'll see you next time.